Hey, it's Mike back at you with the next video. We've got the blue mixed up in the airbrush. I went ahead and wrapped this thing with that other uh, plastic wrap I was telling you about. So I've got the rest of the helmet wrapped, mask off, and I went around this with another row of tape to, uh, to hold this down, but also to keep anything from creeping up in here. So I've got everything ready to go. We're going to take this tack rag. We're just going to go with this really lightly. Now remember, you got to be real careful because this frisket paper, you'll be able to turn an edge up so, so easy. I just did right there. So you just got to go so gently. Very, very gently. Try to stay away from the edges. And then go back and check and make sure that you didn't turn up none of your corners. Okay, I'm just going to kind of look it over here, make sure. See right there. I so what I'm doing is using my fingernail, I'm touching on this other masking tape, not on what I just wiped down, not, not on what we're going to paint, I'm not touching it, I'm touching on the masking tape, and then using my thumbnail to push down that corner. Everything else looks pretty good. Alright, so I turned the air pressure down to 35. I don't want to take a chance on blowing up any of these edges because this frisket paper don't stick real good. I'm just going to go light coats. Now you remember those, those decals where it said snail and then this other decal? We're not, we don't want to cover those up good. We can put a little bit of paint over them, but they still have to be legible. So we just don't want to cover them up. That way when the track inspector at the racetrack looks it all over, you can still see that snail stick. I'm just putting a light coat. Over those areas that we uh, We unmask. Now, this is a raised edge. Okay, so this helmet's got this raised edge. So down here, it kind of goes like this. So what I'm doing is I'm going heavier. Right underneath where that dip is, I'm going heavier because I, I want to make that look like a shadowed area. So I'm, I'm going heavier there. Same thing on this bottom. I'm going to go heavier along that bottom, right next to where your tape is, where that rubber seal is, the bottom edge. I'm going heavier along there. Now I'm just going to kind of follow these paint, these lines, these tape lines. I'm just going to kind of follow them. why the 
soon as I mask this here just a little bit, you'll see why I'm following those lines. And I got a purple look to it when I'm looking in the camera here. I'm using my iPhone 6 Plus to, to shoot this video. I'm looking at the screen and it uh, looks real purple. So I don't want to, I like to use the airbrush for things like this because I don't want to just pile on a whole bunch of paint on here and then have a huge buildup. And then like here, when I untape this, have that real distinct line. I don't, I don't, that mass line, I don't want to have that. So I'm not putting a lot of paint on here. Just enough to kind of cover it. And I'm still seeing, and I'll show you here. So I'm still seeing white. Going through, so I didn't. It's not like I just went in there and just blasted it and just covered it, you know, real heavy. That's that's not the case. I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna put my exacto knife back out, and we're gonna undo these other areas. Make sure you take the time to keep that knife flat when you're getting up underneath these edges to get it started. You don't want to scratch paint. see something that we're going to have to fix here. 
Remember I showed you those little places that, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but right there. Remember the places I showed you that I had to fix the little nicks with some spot putty? You know, my blue didn't get over that like I intended, so we'll have to come in and fix that. About an airbrush is you can you can pretty much fix anything. We're going to have shadows going through here, so we'll be able to hide that pretty good. see it's pretty good see that spot right there where my thumbs at and we'll come in we'll fix that no big deal and like right there that's where I went over with the tack rag moved my edge back it went ahead and pulled up and it didn't go it didn't stick no big deal because we're gonna have a we're going to have a shadow going right through there, so no big deal. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and use the same blue that we've got mixed up. I'm going to reduce it a little bit more, just a little thick. Give it a good shake. So what I did is... I just added some more reducer in here. I'm just put my rag over that hole, give it a shake. Hear that? That sounds better. You can always kind of tell by the sound. We're just going to kind of follow those lines. So we're just going to follow the lines all the way around. Here's where that spot's at. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little extra right there. Kind of camo it. I'm just following the lines. So where these lines go, I'm just kind of going around following them.
there's that edge, that beveled edge. So you want to come in right below it. Kind of put a shadow. And then just put some streaks. So as these curves go, I want to follow these curves. So as these curves go, I want to take that same curve with my airbrush and just bring some streaks in. Right here in these corners, coming in, making it a little darker. This kind of the intersection point for where these corners are. Just kind of come in. Make it just a little bit darker right there in the corners where they kind of intersect, where the squares all kind of meet each other. one it connects those squares so if you happen to miss connecting a few of them like I did it'll just kind of connect them Okay, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean out the gun and I'm going to uh, put some put some white in. And then we're going to come down along here and really make this thing pop. So because this is a base coat, clear coat system, this is just a base coat, no hardener, I'm able to dump that paint right back in my bottle. Here's something I like to do. I'll take reducer, put in there, kind of lightly turn it around, kind of gets all that blue out of there, and I'll dump that right in my paint as well. That paint was a little bit thick. That's why I like to have mine just a little bit thicker. That way, when you're adding that extra reducer to it, now here's some more reducer. Kind of stirring it around a little bit. That getting it sloshing over the sides. Now I'm going to 
let some run through the airbrush. By moving the trigger back and forth like that, you're, you're cleaning the needle. You're really helping clean that needle. Okay. Now we're going to grab some Performance White. This is a Ford color. Give it a good shake. Make sure it's shook real good. This is set for a little bit, so. Okay. This is a little thick, so I'm gonna add a little bit of reducer to it. Okay. Put my rag over that hole. Give it a good shake. If you don't put your rag over that hole, you're going to have paint it where. Put a thumb over it or something. I prefer a rag. Alright, now we're going to take our tack rag. This paint's already dry. So we're going to take our tack rag. I'm going to wipe this down. Get the dust. That paint went on kind of dry, so it's a little dusty. There. You don't have to do that, but I'd recommend doing it. You'll just have a cleaner job in the end when you're done. A lot cleaner. Spray through your airbrush, make sure you get all the the uh, reducer and the blue paint before it, out of it. You can kind of test it up here. You have to spray them. Test it on your masking paper, or your masking tape, or your, in this case, the plastic up here. So it's pretty good. Now we're just gonna come in, we're gonna find our high spots. So typically, as this curve goes right here, this is going to be a raised spot. It's going to be a high spot. So we're going to come in there with white. And that's going to make that really pop. It's going to make it look.